Okay, would you say leaking your opening statement to Punchbowl News, Politico's playbook, and Washington Post several hours before you sent it to this committee as being political, yes or no? I have no idea how my statement got out. <sighs> well, that's bullshit. The director of the Secret Service was called under uh, oath to answer questions about her department's abject failure, 100% total collapse of systems, procedures, and protocols in the Secret Service. They had a zero tolerance policy at the Secret Service. They have no room for error. Failure is not an option, and they failed. They failed with this assassination attempt just nine days ago. And the woman in charge of the Secret Service, she did not provide any kind of confidence to anyone questioning where this department is headed. Take a look at some of the highlights and lowlights. Budget of around $3.1 billion, and I believe around 8,000 employees. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Obviously, there were many security failures on the day of the attempted assassination and leading up to that day. Let's start with the building that the shooter used to shoot President Trump from. At any point Saturday, did the Secret Service have an agent on top of that roof? Sir, I'm sure as you can imagine that we are just nine days out from this uh, incident and there's still an ongoing investigation. And so I want to make sure that any information that we are providing so, to you so, is so factual. You, you can't, okay. Why did the Secret Service not, can you answer why the Secret Service didn't place a single agent on the roof? We are still looking into the advanced process and the decisions right, that right, were made. Okay, okay. Let's, wasn't that building within the perimeter that should be secured? Do we agree with that? The building was outside of the perimeter on the day of the visit. But again, that is one of the things that during the investigation we want to take a look at and determine whether or not other decisions should have been made. All right. Now, uh, a couple of things here Budget. that are noteworthy. By the way, I hope you recognize the fact that she didn't want to answer any questions. I hope you recognize the fact that she keeps saying that there's an ongoing investigation. But who's conducting that investigation? She's conducting that investigation. It's an internal investigation that the Secret Service is conducting of their own failures. Oh, and the FBI. Don't even get me started. You heard at one point when she would not answer the question as to why the Secret Service didn't have somebody on that building, you heard the reaction. That was from the other Republican congressman already just three minutes into this testimony, frustrated that she's not going to answer any questions. How is it nine days after this botched assassination attempt? I, I'm sorry, botched Secret Service attempt to protect President Trump. How do you not have at least the fundamental answer to that question? But there was one revelation there at the end when she revealed that this building was not within the Secret Service perimeter. This is a building that was less than 150 yards away from the protectee with a clear line of sight for a sniper, as we've now learned. And they decided not to have that building within the perimeter. That's a decision. And there should be a very clear paper trail as to who made that decision. And she should have that name right now for this hearing and she didn't have it, or she chose not to share it. Uh, now, there is a whole lot of obfuscation here, and I know that you're going to get frustrated, but it's still incredibly revealing to see what questions she decides to dance around and not answer. And that's what we're going to show you right now, a little bit more from uh, Chairman Comer. One of the things that you said, I believe, in an interview, that there wasn't an agent on the roof because it was a slope roof, is that... Is that normal? And do you fear that that immediately creates an opportunity for future would-be assassins to look for a slanted roof? I mean, it, it, this is a huge question that every American has. Why wasn't a Secret Service agent on the roof? And there have been reports that agents were supposed to be on the roof, but it was hot that day and they didn't want to be on the roof. Can you answer any of those questions, Director? So I appreciate you asking me that question, Chairman. Uh, I should have been more clear in my answer when I spoke about where we place personnel in that interview. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, there was a plan in place to provide overwatch, and we are still looking into responsibilities and who was going to provide overwatch. Uh, but the Secret Service in general, not speaking specifically to this incident, when we are providing overwatch, whether that be through counter snipers or other technology, 
prefer to have sterile rooftops. Nine days later, and she can't give us an answer, at least on the sloped roof debacle. And Comer makes a pretty good point here. You see, she's asked very specific questions about what they did, what decisions were made, and what the protocols were with regard to this obvious abject failure in protecting President Trump. And 98% of the questions asked of her, she says, well, I don't want to get into that because that would reveal our methods and we certainly wouldn't want to give any sort of would-be assassin any insight into how we make our decisions. And yet she was more than willing during a, a softball interview with CNN or ABC News to say, yeah, well, you know, that's a sloped roof and there's a safety hazard there. Thus, ding, 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 alerting any would-be sniper uh, an insight into this ridiculous idea that a sloped roof would prevent a Secret Service agent or sniper to uh, take perch or, or or have a position on it. It was a ridiculous answer that she gave, but it actually defies what she claims is the reason why she can't give answers today. Okay, so why were you okay giving an operational answer to ABC News, even though it was a stupid, erroneous answer, but you're not going to give us Congress answers in our oversight capacity. And can I repeat, it's been nine days. She should have some basic answers to these questions. Otherwise, what the hell is the point of this hearing? And I'll tell you right now, the point is to reveal exactly how inept Kimberly Cheadle is. And let's be clear, she is a political appointee. Oh, I know she was career secret service, but then she decided to leave when Donald Trump was elected. She decided to leave and take a corporate job, and she was only brought back as a political appointee because Jill Biden, the first lady of the United States, liked her and had a relationship with her. That's the definition of a political appointee. Why is the director of the Secret Service a political appointee? How many Secret Service agents were assigned to President Trump on the day of the rally? Again, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the numbers of personnel that we had there. But we feel that there was a sufficient number of agents assigned. There After the fact to say that we feel there was a, suspicious, a sufficient number of agents assigned is absolute insanity. And uh, one other aspect of the Susan Crabtree reporter for Real Clear Politics has been fantastic on this story. Uh, she broke late last night that uh, Chuck Grassley had an internal email at the Secret Service. And, and let's be clear here. Uh, there were stories and uh, reports from moments after this assassination attempt from people within Trump's inner circle. I heard it personally from people inside Trump's inner circle that they had been requesting extra detail and extra personnel for holes that the Trump security people saw in the Secret Service plans. And it had been denied that their requests for extra Secret Service duty had been denied. The Secret Service denied that. The Department of Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas denied those claims. And then seven days later, this weekend, Washington Post and New York Times both confirmed that, yes, in fact, the Secret Service had denied requests for additional personnel. We'll get into that in a moment with Jim Jordan's questioning of Ms. Cheadle here. But what Crabtree has uncovered from Chuck Grassley's uh, latest memo is remarkable. The day of this event in Western Pennsylvania, in uh, rural areas outside of Pittsburgh, Donald Trump's security detail at an outdoor event with thousands and thousands of thousands of people, they were given only uh, three agents to uh, to stand on a, po a stand post. In other words, these are areas where a Secret Service agent gathers and uh, secures the area before the magnetometers are even brought in, the bomb sniffing dogs, all of that stuff. They secure the area and they stand post on that area to ensure that nothing breaches that area and no one else comes in or goes out. That would have prevented this from happening. And they only had three of those agents assigned. On the exact same day in Pittsburgh, just miles away from the Trump event, First Lady Jill Biden had her own political event going on, and she had 13 of those agents on her detail. And as much as I think the First Lady should be protected from harm, she is not in the constitutional chain of command. And the man who was president and now is the leading candidate for president maybe 
should be a higher priority for security details. And now here's Director Kimberly Cheadle of the Secret Service refusing to answer basic questions about the number of personnel that were there. Why? Because it's politically damaging. That's why. They're going to bury this truth as long as they can because they know how ugly it looks. It looks like decisions were made from Joe Biden to Alejandro Mayorkas to Kimberly Cheadle, all three political operatives. It looks like decisions were made that put President Trump in harm's way. And so they're going to bury it. They're going to they're going to hide it. But what she said here is sufficient to have her fired immediately. First of personnel that we had there. But we feel that there was a sufficient number of agents assigned there. They feel that there was a sufficient number of agents assigned. When we know for a fact that they didn't secure this building where the sniper was, they didn't have the agents to do it. They relied on local law enforcement to do it for them. And that resulted in a bullet gouging out the ear of President Trump coming a quarter inch away from hitting his skull. And she still thinks, yeah, I'm standing by our decision. All right. Uh, that brings us to more questioning of Kimberly Cheadle. We've got plenty to get through. This is from a Democrat, a Democrat on this oversight committee. Director Cheadle, as you know, the shooter began shooting at 611 p.m. Eastern on July 13th. NBC reported that at 551 p.m., 20 minutes before the shooting began, the state police informed the Secret Service of their concern. Now, the rally was not paused at that point, correct? No. And according to NBC, just two minutes later, at 5.53 p.m., the Secret Service notified its snipers about the gunman. The rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? No. Let me show you some video footage by rally goers. If you could play the video on the screen up here. This was taken two minutes before the shooting started. If you could turn up the volume. Dangerous people. Criminals. Criminals. We have criminals. We have, criminals. We have, we have, we have people that right should not be here. Right here. Right on the road. Ma'am, that doesn't look like suspicious behavior. That looks like threatening behavior to me. And the rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? I can tell you, as I stated earlier, sir, that the moment that the shift uh, surrounding the president were aware of an actual threat. That's a threat. Right there. The guy's on the roof and everybody's yelling at him. Yes. And and directing the officer's attention to him. The rally was not paused at that point, correct? We are currently still combing through communications and when communications were passed. Well, I can point you to this community. Again, I'm sorry. We'll let this finish because it's important and compelling questioning. But nine days. There are certain fundamental questions that you should have answers to already at this point. Otherwise, what in the hell have you been doing? One of the questions is, hey, guys, and we saw this video within hours of the assassination attempt. So you're the director of the Secret Service, and you see these videos that are showing uh, civilians who were there saying, hey, there's a guy on the roof, and they're telling police that. So you're the director of the Secret Service, and don't you have as maybe one of your top five questions? Hey, what did these police do, and who did they communicate to with the fact that they saw a, a threat on the roof? I want an answer to that. I want an answer now. Partly because you know you're going to be asked that question under oath from the House Oversight Committee, but partly because it's your freaking job to have that answer. And she still says, oh, we're still combing through communications. This is how conspiracy theories are born. And frankly, in my opinion, you have every right to leap to the worst conclusions because they're doing nothing to quell your fears that they're either A, grossly incompetent, or be willfully negligent. This is disgusting. By the way, real fast, I just want to clean this up because I I work without a script. Um, the people who were assigned to Jill Biden's detail, they're called post standers. They stand post. And really quickly, the description here, thanks to a write-up at, uh, at the dispatch. Uh, agents are assigned post at a certain location, which will be on a security plan diagram. Um, that on the day of the event, the post standards arrive several hours before even the personal protection detail arrive, and they do a bomb sweep of the venue. After this, these agents who are both inside and outside the perimeter of the event, 
both inside and outside the perimeter, will remain at their post for the duration of the event. Those are post standards. For the Trump event, thousands of people outdoor with a perimeter that had this, this building outside the perimeter, they were assigned three post standards. Three. This is from the internal Secret Service email that Senator Chuck Grassley released last night. At the Jill Biden event for the First Lady in Pittsburgh, just miles away from this event, they were given 13 post standards. You cannot look me in the eyes. You cannot look the American people in the eyes and say that priorities were given and a higher priority was given to the First Lady at her event. And I'd love to see you know, that event and how big it was and how many thousands of people were there and whether it was in a controlled space versus an uncontrolled outdoor venue like this. But the priority was given to First Lady Jill Biden, who got this woman her job. And the priority was not given to the president of the United States, Donald Trump. All right, more on this questioning here. Communication is two minutes before the shots started ringing out. Director Cheadle, yes or no? Was there ever a moment where the Secret Service actually considered pausing the rally? The Secret Service would have paused the rally had they known or been. So the answer is no. An actual threat. The answer is no. Correct. I can I can speak to you in generalities. No, no, I don't want I generalities. Don't know I want all specifics. Of the communication. The answer is no. You did not consider pausing the rally. Correct. The people that are in charge of protecting the president on that day would never bring the former president out if there was a threat that had been identified. Well, they did, because we've now identified three points in the in the 20 minutes before the shooting that the threat emerged. Yeah, that's right, that the threat emerged, although she went on to say, oh, no, 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 this guy wasn't identified as a threat. He was just identified as suspicious. I kid you not. That's her answer. All right, we got more. Let's get to Jim Jordan, who had a uh, pretty great exchange, multiple exchanges with this woman. Again, uh, what's more important here is the questions that she's not answering because it reveals everything about where this so-called investigation, this internal investigation that I'm sure we're all going to have great faith in where it's going. So which is it? Because both statements can't be true. Were you guessing or lying when you said you didn't turn down requests from President Trump's detail? Neither, sir, and I appreciate the question. Well, what, what were you doing? Because those statements don't, don't jive. So what I can tell you is that for the event in Butler, there were no requests that were denied. As far as requests- Well, maybe they got tired of asking. Maybe you turned them down so darn much, they said, not worth asking. How many times did you turn them down ahead of that? I think that it is important to distinguish between what some people may view as a denial uh, of a, an asset or a request. Well, is Mr. Not- All right, so it's important for me to jump in here because I want to make sure that you have the context because Congressman Jordan began this uh, series of questions by pointing out the fact that uh, reports came out from the Trump team that they had asked for more Secret Service details at various times and they were denied. Then the spokesperson for the Secret Service denied that that ever happened. The Secretary of Homeland Security uh, Kim really Cheadle's boss denied that any requests for additional Secret Service had been denied by the Secret Service and Homeland Security. And then a week later, the Washington Post, the New York Times, they uh, revealed that, in fact, requests for additional security were denied by the Secret Service. And that very same spokesman that denied it a week before conceded over the weekend that, yes, there were requests plural requests for additional secret service that had been denied so he's saying okay were you guessing or were you lying and now look at how she does whatever she can to deny the premise of the question itself well you know some people might mistake a denial for security to just a uh reimagination of how security should be employed and 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 bullshit like that And Jordan stays on her, and she will refuse to answer this question, but this is the key. This is the critical aspect of this. This woman should be fired immediately, but the only people who can fire her are the people who know exactly what's wrong here, and that's Mayorkas and Biden. It's not going to happen. If she had any dignity, if she had any any, uh, moral turpitude, she would resign in shame, but she won't. 
she won't because you know being being a democrat means never having to say you're sorry Guglielmi, your spokesperson he said he acknowledged the secret service had turned down some requests i'm asking how many a denial of a request does not equal a vulnerability well tell me what it is there are a number of ways that threats and risks can be mitigate, mitigated with a number of different assets, whether that be through personnel, whether that be through technology or well, other well, resources. Well, tell the committee which it was. They asked for additional help in some form or another. You told them no. How many times did you tell them no and what'd you tell them no to? Again, I cannot speak to specific incidents, but I can tell you in general terms, uh, the Secret Service uh, is judicious with their resources based on what does some request mean? How many times? Some indicate requests is plural. So more than once they asked for additional help and you turned them down. What did they asked for and how many times did you turn them down? Pretty basic questions. So again, without having all of the details in front of me, sir, what I can tell you is that there are times- You didn't get briefed on how many times you turned down the Trump detail when they asked for additional help? I'm, I'm sorry. You didn't get briefed on that before you came to this hearing knowing you were gonna get asked that question? What I can tell you is that in generic terms, when people, when, when details make a request, there are times that there are alternate ways to cover off on that threat or that risk. But that's not what he said. He said they were denied certain requests, some I, requests. I, this I, is I, your spokesperson, not me talking. This is the Secret Service talking. Yeah, it went on for a while and you get the the gist of it. And good for Jordan for laying out. See, it, it, here's the key here. You don't let them filibuster. You interrupt them and keep pressing them on the issue because, you know, he says, how many times did you deny their request for service, uh, additional security? And she said, well, you know, a denial does not mean that there are increased vulnerabilities. Well, nobody freaking said that. No, nobody, nobody said that your denials led to vulnerabilities, although it's pretty clear that there was a vulnerability there, madam. But the question is very simple. How many times did they request additional security and how many times were they denied? And she claims she doesn't have those details. That is incredulous to say the least. She either is a moron or she willfully said, don't tell me that because I don't wanna say it under oath. So don't give me those details. Just give me you know, broad picture information. So when I go under oath, I don't feel compelled to give details because I have to answer truthfully. So truthfully, I'll say, oh, I don't have that. I can just talk about uh, a big umbrella sort of overview terms. I can't get into the granular. And that's what happens here. This is how they do these things. It's lying without lying. She then made the mistake of saying that she's sitting there trying to answer questions. And that did not end well for her. Who's all doing the investigating at Secret Service? I know the Inspector General, but is there also an internal investigation in addition to the Inspector General? We are conducting a mission assurance investigation internally, yes. You know what it looks like, Director? It looks like you won't answer some pretty basic questions. It looks like you got a 9% raise and you cut corners when it came to protecting one of the most important individuals, most well-known individuals on the planet. A former president, likely the guy's going to be the next president. It looks like you guys were cutting corners. That's what it looks like to me. That's exactly what it looks like because that's exactly what they did. But they only cut corners in certain areas. They only cut corners in the security detail for the man that they have spent the last 10 years calling Adolf Hitler. And now that they're in power, they've spent the last three and a half years saying that he is an existential threat to our democracy and to our constitution. And that if he is allowed to be president, that'll be the end of our nation and that he must be stopped at all costs. That's the guy they cut corners on, that guy. Now we've heard the story about this person, this would be assassin having a range finder in this area, which seems kind of suspicious. And uh, she went at great lengths to explain how that's not a prohibited item, even though you know I can't get on an airplane with freaking toenail clippers. But a range finder is fine when you're going to an outdoor event with unsecured buildings and President Trump there giving a campaign appearance. Did he have a range finder? There were some reports that that the individual had a range finder. That would that would certainly raise my suspicion. Uh, did he have a range finder? Yes, he did. But may okay. I explain that at a number of our sites, especially when you're at outdoor venues, uh, a range finder is not a prohibited item. It is sometimes an item that is brought in by individuals that are going to be. Did in the anybody back. anybody confront him on that? Anybody ask him questions? What are you doing with the 
range finder? Anybody confront him on on his presence where, where he was in proximity to the president? So again, to my knowledge, I believe that that was the process that was taking place was to locate the individual. Did they, did they confront him? Did they go up to him? Did they talk to him? I do not have those details okay, at this that, time. Those are important. Yeah, those are important details that you should have gotten in the nine days you've had. What the hell is she doing? Let's not forget she was at the Republican National Convention having some sort of hospitality suite for local law enforcement who have helped out for the security in Milwaukee. But what is she whining and dining local law enforcement? Get your ass to Washington. Get your ass to Butler and do your freaking job. Nine percent raise woman. Nine percent raise. I love that, too. Hey, guys, I need a raise, man. It's really expensive. Have you been out there? Have you tried to fill up your car with gas recently? Well, you got a 3% raise. You know, that's typical. No, 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 no. It's way too expensive under this Bidenomics. Okay, we'll give you 9%. That's how the conversation went. If you watch this, you're probably frustrated. You're probably saying, why in the hell doesn't somebody just, just start screaming at this woman or screaming profanities and start calling her out? Well, eventually somebody did. Congresswoman Nancy Mace, South Carolina. My first question. Both sides of the aisle today have asked for your resignation. Would you like to use my five minutes to draft your resignation letter? Yes or no? No, thank you. <clears throat> was this a colossal failure? It was a failure. Yes or no? Was it a colossal failure is the question. Yes or no? I have admitted this is a terrible This is a question. yes or no series of questions. Was this a colossal failure? Yes or no? Yes. Was this tragedy preventable? Yes or no? Yes. Has the Secret Service been transparent with this committee? Yes. Would you say the fact that we had to issue a subpoena to get you to show up today as being transparent? Yes or no? I have always been yes eager to or no. You didn't want to answer the, the question. Committee. We had to issue a subpoena to get you to show up today. That is not transparent, by the way. You stated earlier, Secret Service is not political. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Would you say leaking your opening statement to Punchbowl News, Politico's playbook, and Washington Post several hours before you sent it to this committee as being political? Yes or no? I have no idea how my statement got out. <laughs> Well, that's bullshit. Thank you, Nancy Mace. Little little Citadel action seeping through there. And by the way, she's right. That is shit. That's 100% bull. And by the way, the question wasn't who leaked it. The question is, was it political to leak this ahead of your statement and before you actually delivered it to the committee? And the only answer to that is 100%. Yes, it is political because that's who she is. By the way, uh, all of the calls for her resignation today from Republicans, they were not alone. Democrat Ro Kahana had a great moment with Kimberly Cheadle, and I want you to see it because Democrats who step up deserve it. They deserve their moment. Director Cheadle, would you agree that this is the most serious security lapse since President Reagan was shot in 1981 of the Secret Service? Yes, sir, I would. And, you know, do you know what Stuart Knight did when he was in charge at the time of the Secret Service? Do you know what he did afterwards? He remained on duty. He resigned. He resigned. And Stuart Knight was not a Democratic appointee or Republican appointee. Look, I'm not questioning your judgment i and i am questioning her judgment and rokahana with a devastating moment yeah this is this is the biggest failure of the secret service since the reagan assassination attempt and what did that secret service director do and this moron he stayed on duty no he resigned he resigned because the secret service has one job and failure is not an option. And this is an abject failure. But listen, this is the Biden administration. This is the Democrats. There's 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 no such thing as failure. None at all.